As pro-lifers, we're often advocates for children at a time when they can't advocate for themselves. And that love for a child doesn't just end once he or she is outside of the womb. This next story is a reminder for us all about how we can care for children in need. Here's this week's Pro-Life Focus. I want to thank National Rights Alive for having me first. Today, Sarah Zagorski is a rising pro-life voice, but her start in life was an uphill climb. 28 years ago, Sarah was born inside of an abortion clinic where her birth mother was induced by an abortionist at only 26 weeks along. I was her seventh pregnancy, um, and her pregnancy was the result of an affair, so there was a lot of shame involved in the pregnancy as well. She was familiar with abortion. She had two previous abortions in her life. Um, so she wasn't someone that was distant from abortion. She knew what the procedure entailed. She knew what it was about. And she ended up um, going to an abortionist to, um, to have me. And ultimately, the abortionist told her that she should let me die on the table. But when her mother threatened legal action against the abortionist, Newborn Sarah was taken to the hospital, was treated, and survived. To this day, Sarah does not know for certain why she was born in an abortion clinic, as her birth mother struggled with both mental illness and poverty. She had gone to him because she was told his costs were low. Like in her mind, she, I don't even know what her intention was in that. You know, I know she was familiar with abortion. I knew she, he was an abortionist, but I also knew that she was told he was cheap. The setbacks in Sarah's early life continued. At 16 months, abuse and neglect were found in her home, so she was brought into the foster care system for the first time. Sarah was placed with a loving Christian couple, but later was taken back to her biological family. It was an environment she calls a cocktail of depravity. I had older siblings that were abusive, and then I also had a stepfather who was abusive and mentally ill, too. Um, so I had all these people kind of, you know, trying to tear me down emotionally. And also on top of that, I was starving. I was not eating on a regular basis. And, you know, my childhood dilemma wasn't, am I going to watch Sesame Street? It was, you know, or am I going to watch Barney? It was, For the next few years throughout her childhood, Sarah would ping pong from her biological family back to the same loving foster care family. Until finally, at the age of nine, she was officially adopted by her foster care parents. Sarah counts her blessings today. And I have an amazing family because of them, not just them, but their extended family. I have cousins and aunts and uncles that are in my life that are just as real as anyone else's cousins and aunts and uncles. So it's a full network of family that I have that's taken me in as their own. And I don't feel any different than I have child. I think that's in a biological family. The Christian woman says she can see God's fingerprints all over her life. When my foster family came into my life, they introduced the gospel to me right away, um, kind of the, the suffering savior who died on the cross for me. And um, I got to know the suffering savior at a young age, and that was something I needed um, to recover from the pain of my childhood, you know, being abandoned and being, uh, you know, going through the process of trying to forgive my birth mother. And I had to, like, encounter some, you know, I had an encounter with Jesus that really brought into my life healing to say, okay, you know what this is like to be abandoned and to be abused. Now, Sarah is married, is mother to a baby boy, and is using her life experiences for good. Working at Louisiana Right to Life, Sarah advocates for life, foster care, and adoption. As pro-life individuals, we respect the, respect the dignity of all life um, in, in the womb and then outside of the womb. And children are some of the most victimized of our society, right? We see that, that, that all over the world, and some of that's right in front of us. So if we're pro-life about the baby in the womb, we need to be pro-life for that child that's suffering in foster care. Or, or I know in America there's 100,000 children who are, have just got out of the foster care system who are waiting to be adopted. You know, they're, they're ready to be adopted, but no one's going to go there to adopt them. The abortion industry targets poor, struggling families because of the lie some babies would be better off dead than being born in a home of poverty. Sarah says her story proves that's not true. For me, I always say the suffering I went through as a child was so minimal to the joy I have now. You know, it was a small time in my life, and the good memories and the good times and the family I have now outweigh those dark days in my childhood home. The 28-year-old wants other children to also have that chance at joy. As she continues to advocate for foster care, Sarah shares this message with us. All families need to know, if you have a safe place for your child, you are qualified to be a foster parent. And if you will love this child unconditionally like you would love your own child, you're qualified to be a foster parent. If you have a family that can love and support a child, your family is enough.